Good morning, everybody. Welcome in. You are tuned into twitch.tv slash bedsores, coming to you live from our sick couch in the chronic illness autonomous zone. We're your host, Alyssa, here with our co-host and transcriptionist, Earl. Let's get some rest today. It's time for Cleopatra Fortune. As far as puzzle games go, I'm led to believe it's one of the big ones. Today, we are diving into the wonderful world of the Taito Corporation, which is not a wonderful world at all because corporations are bad. The Taito Corporation is like one of the big ones in terms of arcade game makers. Arkanoid, Taito, you know? Space Invaders, Taito, by Earl, Taito. They're taking my cat away from me. To me, Taito is less of a name brand, in part because it's been subsumed by Squeenix, and now it's just sort of like the dustbin of history, compared to like Capcom or Sega. Or the one I always confuse with Capcom. Konami. Thank you. Taito made a lot of games. A lot of them have great names. One sec. Fingers in his ass. I want to give you all a list of some Taito games and what they were named. Gals. Panic. Aqua Jack. Violence Fight. Master of Weapon. The New Zealand Story, Continental Circus, Roomba Lumber, Lady Master, Success Joe, The Ninja Warriors, again. Taito, I do believe developed some games, but like, I think is mainly known as a distributor and, you know. Uh, Taito made Densha de Go. Taito also made Pochi and Ya, except Compile really made it. Libble Rabble. I want to see all these games. Well, you can't! We're just playing this one. Cleopatra Fortune is huge in, like, the competitive puzzle gaming scene. Um, as is Puzzle Bobble. The lead game designer for this went on to be the producer for Shadow of the Colossus. No fucking shot! Sorry. Fingers in his ass. In response to Is She Greek? No, but kind of. I actually don't know a lot about Cleopatra. There are two clearing methods. One is you have to sarcophagize stuff, i.e. surround it in blocks. And then the other is to create a line all the way across. What's the fingers in it? Is it ass reference? Stop the stream. Yes, Kanye what's he likes fingers in his ass. Kanye what's he likes fingers in his ass. Should we play a video game? <laughs> do we do that here? Here we go, everybody. Are you really just starting me with all? This has to be intentional. She thinks I'm perfect. Why is ancient Egypt such a common theme in casinos and arcade games and stuff? I think that's a fascinating question. And I don't know. Opulence and association with unknown treasures? I think that makes sense. Yeah, I'd be curious y'all's theories. Now we're dealing with sarcophagodes. Sarcophaguses. 100% ori orientalism. I mean, yeah. I've definitely seen Chinese mythology slot machines. There's some near work. Slot machines that use forbidden city iconography. Uh, that makes sense. The Art Deco period of architectural design was heavily influenced by the Orientalism associated with the discoveries, quote-unquote, made in Egypt around the same time. Oh, okay. What's this pyramid? What's gonna happen? Oh no! Oh! Fingers in his ass! Gambling uses other cultures to exoticize and produce affect. Yeah, I think a simple but straightforward and prov provable thesis. I interviewed a guy called Scott A. Lucas, who writes a lot about the design of themed spaces and the culture of tiki and has a lot to offer about how this stuff intersects with quote ethnocentric and sexualized notions of primitivism which is super fascinating and grim this sure is getting fast oh the speed goes down again as the casino game space became more crowded with online platforms dev pushed towards more niche themings and by niche i mean smaller and smaller subsets of exploited cultures right i think i probably only contain one thing not multitudes I would like to contain a beer. So I'm starting to get a sense of what the combo theory of this game might be like. And it's fucked. Fingers in his ass. This is some pervert shit.
very funny to have like a a vid that's like getting to level 40 with maximum points and it's like you get the you get maximum points within like the very beginning and then you're just hanging out i'm gonna try to build something fancy i failed fingers in his ass we're going to the cooking pot and we're just stirring some stuff Four combo! Five combo! Six combo! I did it! Let's trace a couple of things about this game's presentation. The two clearing methods are like a little bit, I think, more complicated and higher level than you want in a puzzle game. That said, I think there is great elegance and potential within this game. And the kind of combos that you can draw represent a sort of creativity of stacking that I really haven't encountered in any other medium like this is this is doing something special i think for an idea that's like a little bit out it follows it up mechanically additionally the game gives you a ton of lock delay more than was common at the time for puzzle games as far as i have been able to tell yes this game started on a karaoke machine because that's what taito's business was and then it was ported to arcade uh, i think the tune that we're listening to is good i think it's really well composed a memorable theme I think as far as mascots go, Cleopatra is pretty cute. And seeing her get excited when we do cool stuff and seeing her get sad when we top out or are almost top out is nice. I thought she had two large toes like an ungluate, but she's wearing slippers. Yeah. Final thoughts on Cleopatra Fortune. I mean, I don't like the visual gimmick. I, I have like political issues with this cultural gimmick. I'm going to take it as a given for the purpose of discussion for a little while, but like... That's fucked. Don't do that. It characterizes its own presentation a fair bit. The visual theming is all very consistent. I think although it does not possess a crystalline soul, or as Tim Rogers might say, a crystalline psychology, what you're able to do in the kind of chains that you make are very interesting in this game. What puzzle designers were starting to understand is that clearing lines feels okay, but chains feel really good. Because people almost immediately started taking the Tetris idea the tetris concept and applying gravity to it right unlike in tetris when you clear a block it falls all the way to the bottom which would make tetris too easy and not as interesting the large amount of lock delay feels modern to me in an exciting way only one button for rotating i don't know how common that was at the time we'll have to see can you elaborate on what crystalline soul is yes the crystalline soul of a puzzle game is the most Feminine pizza bag The goal is to have simple rules and very complicated things that are possible from it. A sort of generative soul or like a refractive soul, I guess. For example, in Puyo Puyo, the rules are you match four and they clear and blocks obey gravity. That's it. And yet like Puyo Puyo comboing and chaining theory is so beautiful and so rich. In the case of Cleopatra Fortune, like we have a bunch of rules. If you ensconce things in the playfield or in the blue blocks, they clear. If a line of things are together, they clear. That to me is just like, you've created this wobbly, unbounded thing. I guess this is the motion that I'm using for it. But the thing is, once you add in another base rule set, more things that you are able to do appear. Columns and chaining before Puyo. God, I'm going to have to understand columns someday. The crystalline soul of a fighting game is the sort of rock, paper, scissors battle between grabs, blocks, and punches. The fact that there exists, exists something called the Universal Fighting Game Guide proves that within fighting games there is something universal to their soul from which they're able to generate. And as we know, puzzle games are fighting games. Puzzle games, I think, have to be simpler and more straightforward. We played a game called Monster Slider. You match three blocks and it clears. And... There's a play field that is at an angle that you can tilt at any time, including during a combo, which allows different pieces to come in contact with each other. And so playing that game felt like flying to me because the hook was there and so simple. Certain games, like easy to learn, hard to master, which is, I think, worth interrogating because like something can be very rewarding if it's hard to master too. That's okay. But I just, I think that puzzle games thrive when there's something very simple. Pedal Crash is a fantastic puzzle game that has a very, very, very simple core mechanic. Anyway, uh, Cleopatra Columns was okay. I don't love it. Column was originally called Kmeagle. 
before the ring corrupted it. This has been twitch.tv slash bedsores, coming to you live from our sick couch in the chronic illness autonomous zone. We've been your host, Alyssa, here with our co-host and transcriptionist, Earl. Take care and do your best. Linky to avoid danger Googling? What are you talking about? I was just going to Google fingers in his ass on YouTube and get it all right where I needed it. It's weird when I have to face the reality that Daggett is clever and has deep opinions. Really flies in the face of everything that I regularly <laughs> experience. Oh, oh no. Anybody want some soup? I got some soup here! In my restless streams, I see that place. Fingers in his ass.